In this video, I'd like to address a topic that has come up a fair amount since the macOS Catalina upgrade. It's a matter of keeping other data on the CCC backup disk. In the past, it was a fairly common configuration if you had multiple source volumes and a particularly large backup disk to configure multiple tasks to back up those source volumes to that same backup disk. Uh, so in this case, we have the startup disk being backed up directly to the backup disk. And then we have a second task that backs up uh, a photos volume, for example, to a folder on the backup disk. Another configuration that was fairly common but not a good practice is let's say you have a really large uh, external hard drive and you want to use it to keep things that don't fit on the startup disk. Uh, so you think, okay, that's great. I'll use the disk for my CCC backups and I'll just keep a folder of other stuff there as well. That's not a great practice. We don't recommend ever keeping things on the destination volume uh, unless you also have that stuff backed up elsewhere. You just you really should have a backup of, of everything. So in this particular case, we've got everything going into the CCC backup volume. We've got that separate folder here for the photos backup and everything coexists peacefully up to macOS Catalina. macOS Catalina complicates things a little bit with the introduction of the APFS volume group. So we can see that here in the sidebar. I've got my Catalina system volume, which is read-only, and the data volume, which is read-write. If I were to run this backup task to my CCC backup disk, the first thing that CCC is going to do is convert that destination volume to a data volume and then create a system volume and in so doing create a volume group. Now that doesn't do anything to the data on the volume. All of the data on that volume is still there. Uh, the one complicating factor though is that it makes it difficult to actually find that data. So I'm going to go ahead and run this backup task now just to show what you can expect to see in the finder. So again right now uh, we can see that photos backup folder and now I'm going to run this task and we'll see what it looks like once that's done. Okay, that backup task has completed. And now if we look at the, at the CCC backup volume in the finder, we're going to see that the photos backup folder is missing. And it's not really missing, it's just not visible on this volume in the finder. And just to allay your fears, if you go back to CCC, first of all, we can see in the sidebar that CCC has made the changes to the backup volume. Now it's a volume group and it's got this data volume. If you right click on that data volume and choose reveal in finder, there you go. There's your photos backup folder. And any other data that you had at the root level of the, des of the backup volume, you're going to find that here on the data volume. Uh, so now I'd like to do three things. Uh, first, I would like to show how we can reverse those volume group changes. Um, let's just say uh, you decided you didn't actually want to use that particular volume for a bootable backup. Uh, I'll show you how you can reverse all of those volume group changes to make it back to an ordinary volume. And second, I will show you how you can migrate data off of that destination volume to a new dedicated volume. Uh, so exam for example, if you wanted to use that backup volume for the bootable backup, uh, just how do we get the other stuff out of there so it's not so awkward to access it. And then finally, I'd like to show uh, what you would do in the future to configure a backup task uh, so that we're not running into the situation at all. OK, so to reverse the volume group changes, we're going to do that in Disk Utility. And we can see here, first, I always like to choose Show All Devices so that you can see everything in the sidebar here. Um, here in the sidebar, we can see that my backup disk has now the data volume and the system volume. And to reverse the volume group changes, uh, all we have to do is delete this system volume, not the data volume, because this is where all of your data is, just the system volume. This should have only about 11 gigs of data on it, and it's just the system files. There shouldn't be any user data on that. If the value is larger than 11 gigabytes or so, don't just willy-nilly delete this. Please go ahead and open a support request, and we'll take a closer look at it. But 11 gigs, that's the amount of data that's put there um, by the system. So to remove this volume group, we'll go ahead and delete the system partition, not the volume group, just the system volume. 
and then we will rename this just to CCC Backup. And then you'll notice that it's not appearing in the Finder. We just need to unmount it and then remount it. And now it's in the Finder, and there we go, back to where we were. All right, so step two, let's suppose that I do want to use that volume as a CCC backup volume. Uh, I just want to migrate the data off of that volume, the photos backup folder off that volume to a new volume. So the first thing I'll do is go into disk utility and I'm going to create a new volume on the backup disk just for my photos backup. So we click that plus button in the toolbar, give our new volume a name, and there we go. Now we've got that new photos backup volume showing up in the finder. The next thing I'm, that I'm going to do is add a new task, and this is just going to be a temporary task for migrating content uh, to that photos backup volume. So we're going to go ahead and grab that photos backup folder in the finder. And again, if you didn't revert the volume group changes, you would have just clicked, right-clicked on the CCC Backup Data volume in the sidebar to reveal it in the Finder, and then you'd see this. So I'll drag that onto the source, and then I'm going to run this one-time task to copy my non-bootable backup data from my backup disk to that dedicated Photos Backup volume. Okay, so that copying task is complete. We can go ahead and delete this task. We don't need it anymore. Okay, now we have that data right here on the photos backup volume. Lastly, I'd like to show what the correct configuration is to backup multiple source volumes to the same uh, backup disk. So I've got these tasks reconfigured, uh, my bootable backup going directly to the CCC backup disk, and my photos backup disk as I had it previously going to the folder on the backup disk. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to fix this configuration because we don't want to be backing up to a folder on the bootable backup disk. So we'll X this out and then in Disk Utility we'll go ahead and create a new volume on that vo in that APFS container for the destination. Photos Backup. And then in here, we'll go ahead and select that as the destination. And now we have a dedicated volume for backing up the photos volume. And the nice thing about this, in the past, you used to have to decide how much space each partition would get on the backup disk. That's not the case now. These two volumes are going to share space on that backup disk. So you don't have to predefine how much space each one is going to get. All right, we'll save that task. And now this task doesn't need any changes at all. It's already configured to do a backup to that now dedicated backup volume. And these two tasks will now coexist peacefully. And when we run this task and it converts the destination to a volume group, that's not going to have any effect at all on the photos backup volume. And your data will still be very easily accessible in the Finder through that photos backup volume. If you have additional questions about using Carbon Copy Cloner, select Carbon Copy Cloner Help from the Help menu and search the Knowledge Base. You can also ask a question about CCC to submit a question to our help desk or visit bombic.com.